Hey everyone, welcome to Centro Kids Online. It's awesome to have our Centro Kids family joining us today, so welcome. And welcome to anyone else that's watching as well. It's great to have you all here. I have a question for you kids. How was Centro Kids Connects? Did you get to see the leaders that you haven't seen in a long time and catch up with some friends from Centro Kids? Just get to hang out, play some games and chat. I hope you guys had an amazing time. I know you all did. I got to jump into a few and see your smiling faces, which was really, really great to see. If you missed out, if you didn't get to join, we run our Centro Kids Connects at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday before the service. They only run for 20 minutes, uh, so it's not a massive amount of time, but we have heaps and heaps of fun. So if you want that information, it's on our Facebook group, Centro Kids. So all you need to do is head to our website and there'll be a link that goes to the Facebook group and you can find out all the information there to jump on that. I really encourage you guys to do that because it's a great point of connection for you guys there. We're gonna start our service now, guys, and you know we always start with praise and worship. And that's because that's what the Bible tells us to do. It says in Psalm 100, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So let's praise and worship God. Reading my BIB early, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how JESUS came down to us and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I remember this. Let's go! When you ask, he cares. When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door oh, I'm reading my B.I.B. early And this is what it says to me it tells me that I'm never, ever alone I'm learning how J.S.U.S. came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, He cares When you see, He's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you seek, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares When you seek, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door
thank Jesus that we can freely praise and worship Him. We're going to continue to praise Him as we learn about Him today. I'm going to hand over to Beck and she's going to introduce all about what we're going to learn today. Hey guys, Beck here and today we're continuing our Head, Heart and Hands series. Today we're talking about your heart. Heart attack. Well, guess what? God really cares about the condition of your heart. And today we are going to learn a couple of things about your heart. Did you know that a cheerful heart is just like a good medicine? And we also learned that we shouldn't lose heart when we face battles. And we need to learn to guard our hearts. Proverbs 4 verse 20 to 23. Listen closely to my words and do not let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart. They are life to those who find them. They are health to your whole body and above everything else, guard your heart. It is where your life comes from. Listen closely to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart. Boom, boom, boom. They are life to those who find them. They are health to your whole body. When I'm happy, I laugh, <laughs> I smile, and I feel good. I don't like to be sick. When I'm sick, I feel sad, and I frown, and I have to take medicine. Sometimes medicine tastes yucky, even though I know it'll make me better. The Bible says there's a medicine that is good for us, and one that we will like. It is a cheerful heart. Proverbs 17.22 says this, A cheerful heart is like good medicine. God cares about our heart and wants to give us a cheerful heart. A cheerful heart is happy on the inside. We laugh, we enjoy life, we love others, and even when times are tough, with Jesus, we can still have a cheerful heart. A sad heart can make us feel alone, upset, or sad. But with Jesus, we can have a cheerful heart. We can give our worries to God and know that He will take care of it and He will give us a happy and cheerful heart. Something cool. Oh, hey everyone. Hi, Nanny. Do you like my apron? Yes, we love it. Thank you. When I was in high school, we used to have pottery class. We would make fun objects and then put them in a kiln, which is like a big oven to harden. And when they would come out, we would paint them and make them look beautiful. Well, I thought they were beautiful. Turns out my mugs were just a little ugly. 
So I thought today it would be a perfect idea to show you how pottery is made and learn something about our lives. Pottery starts off like this, a piece of ishy, squishy clay that can be made into any shape. Just like, like Play-Doh! Yes, like Play-Doh. And we can make any shape you can imagine, like a beautiful heart. The interesting thing is that God describes us just like clay, which he can use to shape into anything. Now, when God makes something, you can be sure it will be amazing, a creation that is spectacular. He is a master potter, and if we are willing to work with him, he can shape our lives into something special. <laughs> Let me guess, Max is here. Cheeky monkey. What are you making? That's the thing, Max. I can make whatever I want. A heart or <laughs> even an owl. That's funny. Yeah, but today it's not about what I am making. It's about what God is making. If we're not careful, our lives and our hearts can become hard. Just, just like this clay pot that has been in the fire. <laughs> it can't change. It won't ever be a different shape. It's stuck this way unless we smash it. Whoa! A hard heart is never a good thing. A hard heart is saying to everyone around us, I'm not listening. I'm not moving. I'm staying this way, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's not a good way to live. And that's why God is so interested in the condition of our heart. Is it hard, or can he mold it and shape it like this clay? Over here, we have a heart that will never change. It will always say, afraid. We can't shape it or mold it. Being scared is something that happens to us all. But just like the person in our story today, we can trust God to shape us into a person who is brave. There came a time when the Philistines assembled against King Saul and the people of Israel. Their champion fighter was named Goliath, who was almost two times the height of an average man. The very first day of the battle, Goliath stood before the Israelites and said, Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him, you will become our subjects and serve us. David, our king in training, lived in Bethlehem, looking after his dad's sheep. While he was out in the fields, his dad asked him to take his brother some roasted grain and bread, as they were a part of Saul's army facing Goliath. So David did exactly as his father had asked, and when he got to the battle lines, he witnessed Goliath coming out and challenging the Israelites to fight. Eliab, one of David's brothers, asked, Who's looking after our sheep? You are always trying to get out of work. It's pretty messed up. What do you mean? What have I done wrong? I just came as dad instructed with bread for you guys, David responded. Eliab ignored David, so he spoke with some of the other soldiers around him. His questions made their way to King Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight for him. King Saul wasn't so sure. You're only young, David. You can't handle it. But I've been looking after my dad's sheep my whole life. When a lion or a bear comes and takes any of the sheep, I go after them. I hunt them down and strike them using my sling and a stone. I'll treat Goliath just like them because he's been speaking out against the armies of the living God. King Saul was so moved by David's words and the confidence he had in God that he said to David, go and the Lord be with you. David had known God in the good times and in the challenging times and he chose to keep his faith. The battle ahead wasn't going to be easy, but he chose not to lose heart. He protected it. David hemmed in his heart with his experiences and with the goodness of God and stood before Goliath, defeating him in the name of the Lord God Almighty. We too can learn to let God wrap himself around our hearts so we don't let fear enter in and keep a good heart in times of battle. I'm sure you've heard that story before. It's a very famous part of the Bible and for good reason. It shows us that anyone can make a difference. 
Our friend David spent a lot of his time with himself, his sheep, and God. He trusted God, and even when he was faced with a big challenge, he never gave up. Even the grown-ups all around him were saying no, he said yes. His heart wasn't hard, it was being shaped by God. It was being molded and moved into something that God could use. A whole army had lost heart, had given up and didn't know what to do. But not David. What? A champion? He wasn't a champion just because he won the battle. No, it happened way before that. He was a champion because he never lost heart and trusted in God. God cares about the condition of your heart. My dream was about a baddie. Why was he a baddie? Because he was destroying the world? Oh, no! He made me sad, so I went on a flying skateboard and I was like, woohoo, this is awesome. Then I jumped off. Then the superhero came. That's amazing. Then there was another bad guy, so he started all over again. That's, That's crazy, crazy to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1 Samuel 17, 32. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. I want to be like David. No. Hang on. I want to be like Manny, the Manny that never loses heart, the Manny that always trusts God, yeah, the Manny that God is shaping into something special. And I hope you want to be you as well. Don't get a hard heart and remember John 8:36. If the Son of Man sets you free, you will really be free. Never, ever, ever lose heart. Bye. God cares about the condition of my heart. God cares about the condition of my heart. Ah, oh, God cares about the condition of my heart. Huh. It's time to see just how well you've been paying attention. Are you ready for... Max's Big Quiz! Okay, Max, there are nine cards on screen. We need to find three cards that match today's story. Which number card shall we choose first? Number four from today's story? A big, tall, mean-looking, giant soldier! Whoa, that guy's a Goliath of a man. I have no idea who he is. It's Goliath! Oh yeah, we, we found, found one. one. What about number two? A clay pot. Well, that's not good. It's not very ishy or squishy like the clay Manny had. Hammer. Of course. Clay can become hard like this pot and smash. We, we found, found another, another one. one. Is number nine from today's story? This one's easy. David went down to the riverbed and picked up five smooth snails to fight Goliath with. Snails? Now I think about it, it may have been stones. Double trouble! Ha! Ah, David rode his bike onto the battlefield. No, he didn't. Or, a heart should be soft like clay, easy for God to shape. You got it. You know what that means. We found, found all three. Woo! Yay! Ooh, high five! We did it! Five. Yay! Five side five. Ha ha! Yeah! Max's big quiz. I have a favourite verse, and it's just about how much God cares about the condition of my heart. It reminds me that my heart is very important and I need to take care of it. Sometimes good things happen and sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes we feel happy, sometimes we feel sad. But I've got my favourite verse that talks about it. Would you like to hear it? My favourite verse is Proverbs 4 verse 23. Above everything else guard your heart and everything you do comes from it. It's just like a goalkeeper. We need to learn to protect our hearts. Now you can see why that's my favorite verse and I think that might just be your favorite. As we know, the Bible uses the word heart 
a lot. It's there from the beginning to the end. We have to guard our hearts, protect our hearts. We can have a hard heart or a new heart. The Bible tells us to keep a pure heart, examine our heart, keep our heart. Phew. The Bible talks about our heart a lot. I wonder what all those words mean. Well, today we've learned all about guarding our heart and how God cares about the condition of our heart. So I hope that you've learned a lot in this lesson and you're ready to answer some questions. We're now gonna to move to our connect time. This is a really important time, guys, because everything that you've learned today is being put to the test because we're gonna ask you some questions and then you're gonna to have to give the answers based on today's lesson. The first question, though, is a bit of a fun one. The first question is, if you had to wear only one color for the entire year, what color would you choose? For me, one of my favorite colors is blue, more like a dark blue. So that's probably the color that I would choose to wear for an entire year. Question one, what happened in today's story? David defeated the giant, Goliath. He took some small stones and put one in his slingshot and he won the battle. David was way smaller than Goliath. He could have been very scared and he could have even given up before the battle when he saw how huge Goliath was. But David didn't lose heart. He could have had fear in his heart, but he wasn't afraid because he knew God was with him. Hey kids, question two here. What kind of heart is like a good medicine? A cheerful heart because having a happy heart is just like a good medicine. Question number three, the final question. How can you take care of your heart? Enjoy laughing and having fun. Don't get upset over small things, but trust God with everything. Give your worries to God. Don't get offended easily. Instead, look for the good in every situation. Hey kids, we're just going to go into a time of prayers. So bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you that you care about the condition of our hearts. Help us to guard our hearts and not lose heart when we face tough times. We love you and we pray that this week we'll grow to love you more. In Jesus name, Amen. I hope today you learned all about how a cheerful heart is like good medicine. How when we face a battle, we shouldn't lose heart. And how we must always guard our hearts. Thank you so much for joining us for Centro Kids Online today. I hope you had a wonderful time and learnt lots. Right now, you can head directly to our website, which has a bunch of activities on there for you related to today's lesson. If you don't have a printer at home, I'd love to send those sheets to you so you still get to do the worksheets, the activities, and all of that. So all you need to do is just let us know. And also on our website there, there's a link to our Facebook group, Centro Kids, uh, which we post information uh, about a bunch of stuff, including our Centro Kids Connects which they run at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday before the service. So why don't you jump into them? They've been going so, so good so far. Um, people are loving them. The leaders are loving seeing the kids again. The kids are loving seeing the leaders and their other friends as well. So I'd encourage you to jump into that. And as always, guys, we here at Centro Kids, we love you, we're praying for you, and we can't wait to see you next week. See you later.